Republican Senator Cory Gardner supports moving forward to fill the Supreme Court vacancy following the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That stance is different than his position four years ago when he supported the Republican decision to block President Obama's Supreme Court nominee in the last year of a president's term. But then again, his opponent, Democrat John Hickenlooper, has his own flip flop this year. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger wonders if any of this even matters anymore. It's like deja vu all over again, a Supreme Court vacancy in a presidential election year. One hour ago, Republican Senator Cory Gardner put out a statement supporting judicial nominees who will protect our Constitution, not legislate from the bench, and uphold the law. Should a qualified nominee who meets this criteria be put forward, I will vote to confirm. In a similar situation in 2016, his statement included the next president of the United States should have the opportunity to fill the vacancy on the Supreme Court. Our next election is too soon and the stakes are too high. On the surface, it may look like 2016 is the same as 2020, but it's not. It's oversimplified to say that this is the same situation. Michelle Wing creates political ads for ballot issues. She used to do it for candidates. She points out the 2016 situation had a Democratic president in his final year with a Republican-controlled Senate. Gardner joined Republicans, who said the vacancy should wait until after the election. Democrats, including then-Governor John Hickenlooper, said the Senate should consider the nominee. The Republicans held the cards and let President Trump play his hand when he got elected. Now it's 2020. It's Democrats, including Hickenlooper, now running for Senate saying wait and Republicans, including Gardner, wanting to move forward even quicker. Does the flip flop even matter? It really doesn't matter among Republican and Democratic registered voters in Colorado, but it does matter among some unaffiliated voters. David Flaherty, a conservative pollster who runs Magellan Strategies in Louisville, believes about one in 10 Senate voters will consider Hickenlooper and Gardner equally, meaning the other nine are going to fill in the bubble based on the party affiliation next to the candidate's name. Let's not forget, Hickenlooper is on the ballot for Senate after repeatedly saying this. Being a senator would be meaningful, but I'd hate it. I don't think I'm cut out for that. Does that matter? That's a little bit different in the sense where voters would be like, all right, the guy changed his mind. He's a politician. I understand why he changed his mind. That really doesn't matter to me. I still want to know what John Hickenlooper says he's going to do in the U.S. Senate if elected. Here's something else to consider is who is voting in November. According to David Flaherty, you now have people who were considering COVID voting. How is my health and safety? You might have shifted that a bit to uh, female rights, women's right to choose. You might have voters supporting that or, or vastly against that. Democrats and Republicans coming out just for that issue now, Jeremy, instead of simply thinking, how's my health and safety because of COVID? Uh, good job uh, dissecting this all up, Marshall. You got to wonder what they're going to say at four years from now. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you very much for your work today. We know back in 2016 when Barack Obama nominated Merrick Garland to fill Justice Scalia's seat, Senator Cory Gardner said the American people deserve a role in this process as the next Supreme Court justice will influence the direction of this country four years to come. Four years to come. The next president of the United States should have the opportunity to fill the vacancy on the Supreme Court. That's his quote. We asked our, excuse me, our, we asked our Nine News political analyst James Mejia and Kelly Maher if it even matters what Gardner said back then. When it happens to the other party and you reverse course, I think what that does is really hardens the opinion of the electorate that says we cannot trust the process. And I think that's what we have here. We have a deeply divided electorate that will become even more deeply divided. I think it's super convenient that all of these quotes keep coming up, but nobody is playing the quotes of Democrats at the time, absolutely going into orbit, talking about, we need to have nine justices. We must have nine justices in order to be able to hold an election. And especially heading into a contested election, I think it's super important that we have a full complement of justices. Well, there you go. There's their perspectives. We asked James and Kelly if they thought this reversal by Senator Gardner could impact him in the Senate race. Kelly thinks it would be helpful to Senator Gardner if he shows the people of Colorado that he has the state's best interest in mind when evaluating the new nominee, whoever that is. James thinks short term in the Senate race, it would help Gardner to go against his party and not support the nomination. But long term for his political career, it's best to stick with Republicans, he says.